Hello everyone. Some claim that the age of a true gentleman is far behind us, but here at Tweet4 Media, we definitely disagree. He may appear in different guises today, but the values and ideals that make him a gent still stand. Gentlemen, aspiring gentlemen, and of course, our partners that hold us down. I'm Ron Grant. Welcome to a brand new season of The Art of a Distinguished Gentleman, a show poised to help guide modern day men into 21st century distinguished gentlemen. Now, I know the suit might fool you, but don't worry. It doesn't always involve suits and bow ties, but raw, real-life lessons that translate to grounded, community-minded, well-rounded men. Thank you all for taking this fantastic journey with me. Last season, you heard from some of the most talented young professionals across various disciplines. This season is absolutely no different, from East End to West End, Vojengara to Just Van Dijk, not forgetting uh, Anigata. We will again be joined by the territory's finest distinguished gentlemen. You've heard many times before that we are the sailing capital of the world, and that is absolutely true. But anyone born and raised in the BVI should know a thing or two about the water. Our guest today is no stranger to sailing, sports fishing, chartering, or the business. He hails from East End, Red Bay East End to be exact. He's cool, calm, and always collected. A young entrepreneur who has taken great risk, wise beyond his years. Ladies and gentlemen, joining me is the homie himself, the one and only, our very best and brightest, Captain Chad Letsom, a true 21st century distinguished gentleman. We talk sailing, the art of pitching, mentorship, fatherhood in the making, and actually, what's that like now? A conversation you don't want to miss. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Let's go. The wind, oh! What the hell? I'm freaking out! Is time. Coming to you live and direct from the beautiful British Virgin Islands. What's poppin', what's really good, what's happening, what's happening, what's up? Demons, Viewers, welcome back. You're watching The Art of a Distinguished Gentleman. I am so honored and happy to have the homie, the man himself, Captain Letsom. Chad Letsom, welcome to The Art of a Distinguished Gentleman. Hey, cheers. Thanks for having Absolutely. me. I appreciate it. Most definitely. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, you hail from East End. You hail and sail from East End, Red Bay to be exact. Where, where the heck is Red Bay? <laughs> where, where? Good question. Um, Everyone knows where Long Look is. That's mm -hmm. kind of the, the heart of um, and the history of the BVI starting there. And it's east of Red Bay. From Red Bay, um, you have Fat, sorry, east of Red Bay. It's east of Long Look. Okay. Um, from Long Look on the right, uh, which is westward, you have Fat Hogs Bay. And they're going towards um, East End now. Mm -hmm. You have um, Major Bay. Good. Jim Young, Red Bay, and then the Song. So Red Bay is kind of where the gas station is. Got it. Uh, where the fishing complex um, is supposed to be, where the fishing dock is. Awesome. And uh, it's a fishing village. Great. Wonderful. Now, for those who may not know, tell us about, as the, um, the older people would say, who you are, who you belong to? <laughs> my father is uh, Ashbel Letsom from East End. And my mother is Gail Letsom. Uh, she's from East End as well, but she's originally from the U.S. Uh, she's been on here 40, 48 years. Wow. Quite a long time. Okay. And uh, if mom, if you're watching, I love you. <laughs> That's a good one. Now, when you look at your structure of family um, and, and being blessed to have both your parents around uh, to, to mentor and assist you in whatever way uh, they could while growing up, let's look specifically at male examples. Uh, is there anyone throughout the course of your life or any uh, persons that have stood out and really made an impact um, in the man that you've become? Yes, multiple, 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 multiple men and women alike have reached out to me and kind of, um, you know, kept me under their wing, mm -hmm. um, guided me, giving me advice, uh, lifted me up when I was down. Uh, there's a, a few specific people I can remember very well. Um, when I was younger, one gentleman um, from East End in the community gave me a ride home from school one day. And I was just feeling glum and down. I hated mm -hmm. homework. I was getting bad grades. Uh, I just wasn't happy where I was in life. 
And he, he um, gave me a ride and he said he could have sensed I wasn't feeling good. And he kind of said, Chad, no matter what, mm. the wall ain't going to leave you. Mm. You are on the wall and you're spinning with the wall. You always stop in one place and the wall ain't going to leave you. So mm. don't worry, everything will work out. And those words stuck with me till this day. Amazing. And that was just a simple conversation on the way home. Um, I've had other uh, mentors that have guided me in certain skill sets, got me into the technical field. Yes. Um, a, a first cousin of mine kept me under his wing, taught me everything he knew in the IT field. And, um, you know, I guess helped um, jumpstart my career and where it was going. And um, that was my first cousin, direct family. And then another member who, who was not related to me at mm -hmm. all um, helped me and guided me in the same area. So um, those are just three simple examples, but there's Wonderful. many, many, many more. How important, uh, now that you are an adult, looking back, how important would you say is that level of uh, mentorship when it comes to the growth and development of our young men? It, it has to happen. Um, and uh, one thing a, a good mentor told me is, Chad, I'm doing this for you. Just make sure you do this for two other people. Just wow. two, yeah. not three, not four. Just make sure you do this for two other people. Okay. And if everyone does that, then we'll have everybody covered. And uh, we have to mentor. We have to... You might not think you're a mentor, you might not think you're in a position um, to guide and share, but the fact is you're older than somebody else. Right. There's always somebody younger than you. There's always somebody less experienced than you. And if you could just help um, in any way you can, that's important. And that alone is, should be an opportunity for you to be able to share and impart some knowledge. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Thank exactly. you for that nugget. Now, you uh, have been sailing for quite a long time. You're a captain, uh, sports fishing, you're in the charter business. How did you... Uh, get into uh, being uh, so comfortable on the water? Yeah, well, my, my parents um, are the ones to thank for that and mm. also the luck of being from a multi-generational fishing family in, wow. in East End in Red Bay is another lucky thing that got me into the water. And uh, my father, my father has been on the water forever. He's multi-generational fishing and um, he taught me my ways. I was two, two years old mm -hmm. with a little engine in my hand going around in circles for hours, <laughs> loving it. Nice. Right? That, that's when I started, you know, and um, ever since I know myself, I've been behind the wheel of a boat. My father would hold me in his hands, give me the wheel, let me go again. By the time I was six, five and six, I had my own little dinghy. Mm -hmm. I could go island hopping by myself. And that was a, a level of freedom that doesn't really exist that much. That's true. Today. Yeah, yeah. And uh, i really thankful for that. And I built on the water all day, bare shot. Bareback, uh, mm -hmm. no shot, just a, a swimming trunks on and my little dinghy and I out on, on water all day long. All, wow. my, all the hair on my hands were golden, all the hair on my hair were golden because I was in the sun all day long. Being sun and you absolutely love it, clearly. Absolutely love it, never Wonderful. gets old. When we look at, um, you know, you just said you're, sometimes you spend all day on the water. Um, we love the water, the waters are amazing, but they could be a little bit unkind. Um, unfortunately, throughout the years, we've lost... Uh, our lives uh, when it comes to uh, the art of fishing and, and, and just local men in general who uh, traverse the waters. From your experience, uh, what are some nuggets of importance that persons who are in that field or looking for it, um, interested in it, should be aware as it pertains to fishing and sailing in general? Yeah, well, you always have to take safety into consideration. Yes. The, the weather is something you have to keep a pulse on mm -hmm. because that, that will, you, you can't beat the weather, you can't mm -hmm. beat Mother Nature. So I always keep a pulse on that. I always tell somebody where you're going, right? Um, some places call this a float plan, okay. right? You, I go in fishing off the south side of Ojigata today. So if you don't come back in by evening, somebody knows my uncle. I always tell an uncle, a brother, a father, somebody where mm -hmm. you're going. So if um, my engines die on me, if something happens, they know a general area to come look for me. Um, and you always go out with somebody, okay. right? Um, I've, I've had lots of friends and, and even family go out by themselves and mm -hmm. even had a couple of marine incidents where they lost their lives mm -hmm. and it was probably something as simple as they didn't have somebody on board to pull back the throttle when they fell overboard yeah, yeah. or something like that. You always need somebody there. You never know what happens and um, that will save your life. So uh, keep safety conscious, have the right equipment, maintain your vessel and um, always let people know what you're doing. Indeed, you heard it uh, directly from the captain himself. Now, Chad, you are new to the world of fatherhood, right? Um, you are blessed to be a girl dad. Mm. Tell me about that, Joni. How's mm. that going? 
Yeah, it's it's amazing. This is uh, my first child. Nice. Good. First um, of all, congratulations. Thank you, man, and congratulations to yourself. Thank you too. You, had a, you have a new king on the way. Yes, yes a prince in, yes. Uh, in the making. That's awesome. Well, it, it's, it's as you know, it's, it's an amazing feeling. I've always been told most of my life mm-hmm. that you just can't explain the feeling of having kids, and that's so correct. I, I, I could not have imagined this feeling before, and now you're only doing everything for yourself. You're doing it for someone else. You just feel a sense of fulfillment and purpose. And, you know, if I had drive before, I have even more drive now, you know. Indeed. And, and that's, um, that's something you just can't explain succinctly. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. My daughter is uh, three and a half, going on four months old. Wow. Her name is Carenza Bella Letsum. Carenza. And uh, her mother, Natasha, is amazing. She uh, went through the, the labor process mm-hmm. like a boss. She's, she's an awesome mother. Mm-hmm. And um, our baby's lucky enough to have uh, four of their grandparents. Amazing. So uh, yes. both, both grandmas are spoiling her to the tea, and yeah. uh, both grandpas are there present uh, as well, hanging out with her um, very often. So I, we couldn't be luckier. That's what's up. Now, I want to talk uh, to the support mechanism when it comes to uh, fatherhood and being there for uh, the women in our lives. Um, speak to the young men out there who are perhaps already fathers, uh, hoping and anticipating, or they're expecting. Um, and locally, you know, there's this term, or uh, she breed, or, no, well, first of all, guys, uh, she's not a cow, so let's, let's get a tone breed out of the way, right? Uh, but speak to the art of support in, in a variety of ways, uh, from a father perspective, whether you're just a father, um, or in a relationship, or you're a husband. That support mechanism for mother and child. Yeah, it's a must and it's overlooked, right? The black, the black community is yes. um, disadvantaged in this because our families were broken up during the slavery process, mm-hmm. right? And um, that still lingers today. So we have to be very conscious and cognizant about being present during, during the pregnancy, mm-hmm. um, before the baby even arrives, and being very present afterwards. Because the baby can hear, hear you in the womb. The baby, baby knows your tone of voice. The mm-hmm. baby knows daddy long before, months and months before the baby comes, to, comes out. Yeah. So um, it's important to be there in the very beginning. The mother needs your support. You're, you're going to be, she's going to be raising your next king or queen. Mm-hmm. So you need to be supportive of her. She has to go through a lot. And um, it, it's just so amazing what mothers go through. Right? It, it's... Um, it's interesting now to be a man mm-hmm. and go through the whole process from the very beginning, very, to, very un- beginning. to understand yeah. it. Right yeah. before, when you're growing up and you're looking at your mother, you know she's your everything, but you didn't know what, what she had to go through mm-hmm. before you could start remembering things, you know? So um, no, understanding that whole other facet is so huge and amazing. And um, like I mentioned to you before, yes. if, if I saw a mother um, out before I had a child, I would acknowledge her, I'd pull out a chair, open a door, mm-hmm. you know, I'd be kind to her. But I wouldn't go out of my way to say, you're looking lovely today, you're awesome. How are you feeling? How are you mm-hmm. feeling? Um, you know, I, w- I wouldn't go out of my way to really compliment her and build her. Mm-hmm. But now I got to do that because I see what she's going you know through. I know it. what yeah. she's going yeah. through. So yeah. I have to say thank you every chance I get to, to anyone. And, and uh, viewers, Chad and I uh, share a very special bond because throughout the entire process, uh, we uh, supported each other um, wholeheartedly. I mean, he introduced me to uh, Lamaze, the process, what it takes, um, and literally, um, just like him, I was there uh, front and center. Um, the only thing I had it was a camera. Um, but that is the beauty of um, really taking the role and responsibility from beginning uh, throughout. Um, mm-hmm. And I wish and employ uh, our young men out there to take it seriously and enjoy the journey. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have had the opportunity to do some really remarkable things, not only locally, but uh, regionally and internationally as well. I must commend you for the level of risk that you have taken and continue to take as it pertains to business and a variety of ventures. Of course, we have to touch on CHIP. Um, You have had the opportunity to stand before audiences and and pitch and present your ideas. Um, Tell us about CHIP, um, how it's going, and also, uh, after that, I want to touch on the art of pitching because it's very important for our young men to understand when uh, creatively sharing ideas um, and encouraging persons to come on board that there's an art to pitching. You know, there's an art to the conversation of sharing an idea. Mm-hmm. How is Chip uh, doing 
what's what are we doing what, where is it at and um, tell us about that international exposure yeah well uh, we uh, some people know I have a, Ching, that is. a fintech business called Ching uh, it's a regional business and um, it was something that did not exist here in the Caribbean before we started mm -hmm. so we were you know trailblazing in that aspect and um, it 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 has a lot to do with pitching in the beginning. When you're trying to get a new idea and a new business off the ground, you have to convince a lot of people that this is something mm -hmm. to do, that this is, you have to sell it, number one. Um, but you also have to gain, gain support and gain partnerships, and you really have to sell the idea and pitch the idea. I'm not a salesman, but I understand the concept that you need to get to your, your facts clearly and succinctly so that someone else can pick up that idea yeah. and walk with it or run with it. So um, branding was really important for us in the beginning. So we focused a lot of time on that to be succinct and clear and communicate a lot within the brand without mm -hmm. saying anything. And uh, uh, that really is around the essence of being concise and clear. That's the art of pitching, is being saying as much as you can Love in it. as few words as possible. You have to get condensed because remember, someone has to take this information in. If you're just giving them a plethora of information, yeah. They, they can take pieces of that, and it might be the wrong pieces, the pieces that you don't necessarily want to focus on. So you have to be as concise as possible and direct as possible. Say what you're saying as shortly and beautifully as you can for someone to pick it up. And um, that's really the art of, uh, of pitching that got us going uh, and got us successful to where we are today. And uh, many other things, but um, that helped a lot. No, when you look at uh, the initial stages, and we mentioned uh, earlier about taking risk, uh, speak to that because a lot of persons, young persons, mm -hmm. uh, find it difficult, difficult, and we can understand the apprehension, mm -hmm. uh, not only in sharing an idea um, and not knowing if it's going to be well received, but also uh, taking risk, and, and those risks might be uh, a variety of things, but speak to our ability um, to take risk and literally believe in ourselves and see where it goes. Yeah, um, I think a lot of people, including myself, want things to be perfect mm -hmm. before they really go all in or go full throttle or, or, or even start. They want, they want the stars to align before they start, right? Mm -hmm. And um, that's just not how it works. You have to take the risk and just do and execute. You have an idea, an, a great idea, mm -hmm. but an idea is worth nothing. You have to build it, you have to execute, you have to do. And um, it, you have to overcome this, this fear in your head about stepping forward and take the risk to step forward that you might feel. If you never took your first step, you'd never walk, right? And imagine if you never did that. How many times did you fall along when you took your first step? Many. Nobody, no baby ever started walking perfectly the first time, right? Yeah. So it's the same concept. You just have to try. You might fail. That's your risk. You're losing stuff. You're losing money. You're losing time. You're, you're wasting effort. But guess what? Ain't wasted because you're learning from that process, and you're gonna do it a different way next time, and it's gonna be better and and improved. You so it. you just have to do it, no matter what. Don't let anything come in your way. Don't be waiting for a perfect time, a perfect moment. Just do mm. it now. And the sooner you do it, the sooner you learn. The farther you are ahead, someone else comes and do it. They have to go through that same process, and you'll be ahead. So just just do. Don't don't wait. Thank you for that level of honesty. Now, when we look at sailing, sports fishing, the charter business for which you are a part, that's your livelihood. Mm. Uh, and COVID-19, of course, and the pandemic that is, uh, and which we are living through, and all of those challenges. Tell me about, from your seat uh, behind the wheel, uh, what are some of the challenges and how persons within the industry uh, might be able to uh, continue to do their best to navigate the challenges? Yeah, well, I mean, the, the challenge, the major challenge during COVID is uh, lack of customers. Yes. Right? We, uh, we're a tourism capital, and uh, we have no tourists here. Mm -hmm. So uh, the money's not coming in the door like it was before, and we don't have customers to sell to. So that's, that's huge. That's um, critical. And uh, the only thing we can do is pivot and focus on ourselves and um, focus more on the local customers instead of the international customers. Okay. And that means different marketing. That means uh, different products and services. Uh, you have to adjust alter course, if you will, sailing-wise, yeah. to now accommodate for this wind shift. And um, I, I think that's the best we can do, is not forget ourselves, um, cater to uh, the people of the Virgin Islands, and get our economy going locally until we get tourism back. And the other thing, um, 
to, to not be so blind and just focus on, on what's in the BVI, we have to also look regionally, right? We can't, if we don't, we can't sell um, something to uh, interna international tourists coming here. Maybe we can take our product or service to them um, yes. across seas. And uh, maybe we can have a regional offering um, to other, other neighboring islands. So we have to look at that as well, right? I don't want to just focus and say everything, focus on the island. Yeah. Because um, big business is never only on the island. It's regional, it's international. And we need to be focused at that level. Got you. Now, hindsight is twenty twenty. You've accomplished quite a bit. Uh, you continue to do great things for which we are proud and we congratulate you. Um, what's next? Anything up your sleeves? I'm working on a new marine product um, that Ching is the, the core behind. Mm -hmm. And um, this is a, a tailored platform for the marine sector. Okay. And um, we're focusing on that. That will be launching. In, it's, it's technically already operational, but we haven't done a big official launch. Okay. Um, so we, we, we're getting poised for that. And that's exciting. Um, we're taking a big risk with this because there's not tourists here and the marine sector is mainly supported by tourism. Yes. So we're building, prepping, modernizing um, things for the reopening of the BVI and when tourism comes back. So that's a risk, but um, we got to take it. We got to take it. Indeed, taking risk. When you look at the career and the uh, a myriad of opportunities that come from fishing, I must admit to you, I always dreamt about being a fisherman. Uh, the art of actually being able to fish and come back with um, a, a, a catch and mm -hmm. uh, being able to sell that. For persons who might be interested, young men, or who have the opportunity to have been raised in that um, type of environment, similar to uh, Red Bay, East End, Carrot Bay is another um, uh, mm -hmm. fishing capital mecca mm -hmm. uh, in the territory. Mm -hmm. uh, young men who are raised and have the opportunity to be uh, brought up in that level of um, uh, discipline, what do you say to them who might be like, ah, man, that's too, too much hard work, especially now in these times? Yeah, well, you have to love it. You have to like okay. doing it, right? Um, you know, and you have to be mindful of if you're, you're doing it, you're not just wasting money because it's easy to waste money mm -hmm. fishing, having fun. Mm -hmm. um, but if you want to make it into a business, you have to be more precise and, and strategic with it. Um, so I would say make sure you love it first. Make sure you like it. It's very hard work. You're up long hours. Uh, you go out early in the morning to catch the fish in the morning. You have to stay out there in the evening till the wind is that bite in the evening. And then when you come in, you still have to deal with your catch, cleaning it, storing yes. it, and then selling it. So uh, it's, it, it's the long hours, the long days, um, but it's, it's worth it if you really like doing it. Amazing. And, and you're hunting. You're basically hunting on the water, right? You, there's tack and strategy in that. You have to lure the fish towards you. You have to entice them to come. You have to pick up the tactics and the trades and the skills to make that happen. And then um, I always tell people you have to have the right things, right? Um, you have to know what to do, mm -hmm. and you have to know where to go. Those three things, if you put them together, that's when you become a, a good fisherman. You spoke earlier uh, about having that level of chivalry, um, opening the door for you know, a pregnant woman or woman in general, um, you know, making sure that she's okay. Where did that level of gentleman-like behavior uh, come from? And, and, and what do you say to those who see it perhaps as a weakness? Yeah, I, I would say I was, um, I had a lot of mentors that guided me in towards that. Okay. Right? Um, I wouldn't say I necessarily learned it from direct family. I wouldn't say I learned it from my friends. Okay. But I had a few key mentors in my life that were just gentlemen. Right? They, were, they were very smooth, well-spoken, mm -hmm. um, always calm and collective like you, you've been iterating. And um, these are things that they did to please others and help others and keep the whole environment around them smooth and mm -hmm. nice. Right? So I, I picked up on that and thought this is, this is, this is good to do and it's respectful to do and it's, it's nice. You, you, you build good relationships doing this. Mm -hmm. so, um, and to say uh, to people who think that's overkill or too much or are hating on it, that's your cup of tea, big mm -hmm. man. You do what you want, yeah. right? Uh, I just wouldn't be disrespecting. I'd be, I'd be humble and polite most of the time, unless you mess with me. <laughs> and, and that essentially, at the end of the day, is encompassing of the gentleman and who he uh, possesses and who he becomes. Yeah. Uh, when you think of passing on the mantle uh, of leadership, not only in sailing, 
but in treating others and how to be treated. I want to touch on the fact that you're a girl dad again. Mm -hmm. Not only do our young men need to know how to treat um, young women and people in general, but our young women need to know how to be treated. Mm -hmm. What are some of the lessons that you look forward uh, to imparting to your daughter as it pertains to how to be treated, what to look for? Yeah, well, the, the earliest and quickest way she learns that is how I treat her mother, mm -hmm. by example, right? Uh, so I have to treat her mother nice. I have to show my daughter what it's like to be loved by showing love to, my, to her mother. And that's, that's the simplest way to put it. And mm -hmm. that, if you just do that and that only, I think that would suffice. Okay. Um, but beyond that, I guess I have to, I don't want to say sit her down and teach her because I, I know how it necessarily mm -hmm. go, but I have to... Um, show her and highlight examples, not just in our um, immediate family, but in other um, examples as I see it uh, with other family members, other friends, other community members, what's good, what's bad, and you know, everyone needs to be taught what's wrong from right. I think my parents did a great job with me on that. Mm -hmm. So they just have to make examples out of things and uh, pass small judgments to give her the gist on um, what's left from right. Indeed, and leading essentially, by yeah. example. Yeah, and you know, I don't want my daughter to be treated badly, but based on your previous point, mm -hmm. I can always respect because uh, what goes around comes around. I don't want to have nobody disrespect my daughter or, yeah. or her mother or anybody in my family. So if you're, you're nice, yeah, hopefully that comes back to you. Indeed. Uh, Chad lets on the one and only captain. Thank you so much uh, for taking the time out. Uh, it's always great uh, uh, chatting with you. Uh, continue to be great, continue to inspire. Uh, continue to keep doing the damn thing, dude. I mean, you've been doing it, and we uh, congratulate you on that. Uh, and so proud of you. Thanks, Yours? man. Thanks Absolutely. for having me on the show. You're most and, welcome. Um, I'm, I'm humble and honored to be here. The gentleman himself, Chad, let some viewers. That's all the time we have. Stick with us.